Hi, I'm Seper and I'm a solution architect in AWS. Today I'm going to talk about how you can deploy Windows servers in Elastic Beanstalk. Uh, a little bit of background, what is Elastic Beanstalk? Uh, it's an AWS service that allows you to focus on your code and takes care of provisioning the resources that are required to run your code uh, in your target environment. And you can have multiple environments in Elastic Beanstalk that have one environment for production, another one for testing, another one for uh, system integration testing, for example, and so forth. Now, the question is, uh, is it possible to run a Windows service in Elastic Beanstalk? Short answer is yes. Uh, keep in mind that Elastic Beanstalk is used to run web applications. It's primarily designed to uh, run web applications. Uh, but there are some web applications that require other dependencies to be deployed along with them. And one of those dependencies, for example, could be a Windows service. And in uh, this case, I'm going to show you how to do that. In order to uh, publish a Windows service in Elastic Beanstalk, first you have to uh, put the binary somewhere that's accessible through a link. And the best place to do that in AWS is to put it in an S3 bucket. And to make sure that your, uh, your binaries are accessible from your Elastic Beanstalk applications and also uh, uh, your binaries are secured and will not be accessible by uh, others, the best way to do that is to uh, use a pre-signed URL, a time-bound pre-signed URL that can be generated from inside Visual Studio as well. I'll show you how to do that. All right, uh, once you have your binaries published in S3 Bucket, the next thing is to create a, an EB extensions configuration file and add it to your web application. And uh, in that EB extensions file, we will uh, put the pre-signed URL to the binaries of the Windows application, which will be downloaded by Elastic Beanstalk on your target environment. Uh, target application environment, and then it will install the Win service. Okay, so so let's see how that actually works. Now here in Visual Studio, I have a solution with two projects. One is a empty web application. Uh, as you can see, it's completely empty. There's nothing here except this one uh, directory that I've uh, named as .eb extensions. And inside that folder, I have a file which is called winservice.config. And uh, it doesn't matter what name this has, but it must always have the extension .config. It could give it any other name, like my winservice or anything else, uh, followed by .config as its name. I also have a Windows service. I've developed a very simple Windows service here. Uh, I've called it SS Test Service. And uh, if I go to the code behind your code, as you can see, it's a very simple service that simply writes some logs uh, in the Windows uh, event logs and also inserts it into a database. So I can see uh, my Windows service is working or not working. All right, so I have this Windows service and I've uh, built it. So when you build this, you will get some binaries. And once you have the binaries, all you have to do is to uh, publish them in an S3 bucket. So let's go have a look. So this is my Windows service code. If I go to the binaries folder, Okay, so only thing I need here is the exe binary and the config file. Okay. Zip that. Windows service file. That's it. Okay. So I have the zip file now. <clears throat> Next thing I need to do is to publish this into an S3 bucket. Let me do that from AWS console. I'll go to Amazon S3. All 
All right, I'll go to, uh, you should have an S3 bucket. If you don't have one, you can create a bucket. Otherwise, I already have this bucket, so I'll just open it. And you could create a folder. Uh, let's just create one. Or I've, I've already created this PB test folder arch. Now I can opt it, upload my binary file to here. Drag and drop. And next, assign the uh, permissions. Now here you could also make it as publicly uh, accessible, but in that case, everyone in the world would be able to see your binaries. You don't want that. So instead, we're going to use a pre signed URL. All right, so my binaries. Uh, so this is the binaries for the Windows service that I've uploaded into my S3 bucket. Now, the next thing I need to do is to generate a pre signed URL for that. So if I go back to Visual Studio, in AWS Explorer, if I expand S3 and then my bucket, I can see contents of that bucket. If I open in the test, my zip file is there. Now, create pre-signed URL. If you right click on that, create pre-signed URL is the option you're looking for. Now here you can define the time boundary that the URL is going to be valid. Anyone who has this uh, URL will be able to access the file, but the URL will be valid for a certain duration of time that you can specify here. For example, today is Sunday 14th and I want it to be expired today itself. It's 2.55 a.m. Let's say I want it to expire in one hour or it could be less and more whatever works for you. Uh, object key, that's the name of the file. Action, get. Content type, name. Generate. Now I have my pre-signed URL generated here. If I hit copy, I can put that here, as you can see. So it has a signature that allows S3 to know uh, this uh, the authorization or authentication information for this particular object. All right, that's fine. Now, what's next? We go back to my solution. Now, if you recall, we had this .eb extensions file in the web application. The web application is the main uh, application that's going to be deployed in Elastic Beanstalk. Now, I need to uh, add the information and the configurations uh, to this PB extensions file. It's better to open it in another uh, editor, text editor like Notepad or Notepad++. Don't open it in Visual Studio because dot config file can confuse Visual Studio and it can uh, alter the formattings in a way that doesn't work anymore. Uh, the formatting of this config file is YAML as you can see um, so i have this section sources I'm, I'm specifying a directory in my target environment so c colon slash win srv this is this uh the, the path in the target environment the server on which your application is going to run and i want to download the contents of my windows service file one windows service the binaries and uh, copy them into this uh, path. So all I need to do is now to update this URL with the one that I just generated. Okay, that's done. Now in the command section, as you can see, install test win services. This is the command install util. This is how you would install the Windows service using the install utility in Windows. Uh, command working directory, see winsrv where I put the binary package. And in the services section, I'm defining a Windows service 
and service name is SS Test Service. This is the same uh, service name as specified in the Windows Service itself. So if I open my the design view of my Windows Service, and if I go to Properties, you can see the service name is SS Test Service. I'm putting the same name here, SS Test Service. Enable True. Ensure running true and commands install test win service. This is the same command defined here. I'm invoking that command. All right, so I'll save this. Now, everything looks fine. All I need to do is to deploy this application, the web application, which now includes this .eb extension directory and the configuration that's placed inside it into Elastic Beanstalk. You could do that directly from Visual Studio if I right click because I have the AWS tools for Visual Studio installed. I have this extension enabled here, Publish to AWS Elastic Beanstalk. And here you have the option to create a new application environment or redeploy to an existing environment. So if I select create new application environment, you could give it a name, Web application fine, I'm okay with that name. And you can also give a name to the target environment. There are some uh, suggested names, for example, let's say Web application test is my environment name. Check availability, it's not available obviously because it's already been there, so I'll change it to SS. This one is available. Next. Container type. That's your target environment container type in Elastic Beanstalk. This is going to be Windows Server, Windows deployments. And you can see all of the different versions of Windows Server that are available from uh, Server 2008 up to 2016. So if you go to the console, you can also probably see newer versions. Let's say I want to deploy it in Windows Server 2016 running IIS 10. And I want my instance type to be a M4 X large instance, for example. And a key pair that allows you to um, log into the instance if you have to do anything. Usually, you wouldn't uh, ideally have to log into your Elastic Beanstalk servers because everything is automatically configured. But in case you have to do anything, for example, for troubleshooting or anything else, this key can allow you to do that. Um, all right, single instance environment, non default VPC, single instance environment, enable rolling deployments. All of that sounds good. Now, VPC, I want to deploy it into this VPC. Uh, ELB name. Subnet, let's put it in a public subnet so we can access the application. That also looks good. Next. Now you can also assign a role to your uh, deployed application if it has to have permissions to access any of the other AWS services, you can specify that through roles. I don't need any roles, it's just it's the Elastic Install GC2 role, service role. Alright, since this is a Windows service, I don't care about any of those options. And I'll just deploy it. Environment, okay, you can see the summary of the target environment and deploy. As you can see here, it's uploading my application package. Upload completed. 
creating an application, creating an environment, publish, successful. Now, this is the uh, cloud formation template that's been automatically used by um, Elastic Beanstalk to deploy my web application. In this window, you can see the events uh, as the CloudFormation stack is being created. And this stack includes all of the resources uh, that are required to run my application. As you can see, the status is launching, which means it's not completed yet. All right, the environment is healthy. That's the status. Successfully launched environment for application one dash test. Now, if I go back to AWS console and check the Elastic Beanstalk console, Elastic Beanstalk. I change my environment by region to Sydney region, that's where I deployed my application. Here it is, web application one. And this is the environment, web, web application one test. And here you can see the application available and both things to be green. Okay. Now, let's also take a look at the EC2 console. I go to instances. The application one test is the instance that's uh, having my application running in it. All right, uh, I also want to know uh, if my Windows service is actually installed and is running on this uh, EC2 instance. One way to do that is to open a RDP session to this EC2 instance, the Windows server, and verify it through the RDP session. But since this is a managed service, there is also an easier way to do that. So if I go to uh, Systems Manager console, In the managed instances section, you can see the list of managed EC2 instances, and one of them is my web application one test. If I select that and go to actions, start session, it will give me a PowerShell session inside the browser to that target EC2 instance. Now here I can use the command that get service name uh, so it was SS test service like SS as you can see it's there SS test service. Mm -hmm.